All right, just a real quick preview for you guys on the project that we're working on currently. Uh, this is one of the most interesting wiring situations I have ever seen. Take a look at this. That used to be a false ceiling, obviously. <laughs> there are so many issues with this that it's almost hard to know like where to begin as far as analyzing it. But let's just start with uh, this junction right here that's not being made in a junction box. Oh right, there's another one. Oh wait, right over here, there's two more. So uh, most of the junctions really weren't made in a box. There is no connector where that Romex is going into the box. There is a connector on the right, but on the left hand side right there, there's not. And then we've got an unsecured cable going over there into that wall, which drops down to our switch, which presumably that's the whole reason for that piece right there. It's just a switch leg for this center dining room light. Now this mess was just hanging here in the ceiling. This uh, thing was busted open just like it is right now. This was all just above the false ceiling, so you didn't really see it until you actually looked up in here. But yeah, what a disaster. Now, even more interesting than that, uh, we are going to be adding some recessed lights in here, but this entire setup is being powered from knob and tube wiring. You can see right there, those two wires coming through that joist, that is what we would call knob and tube, and it's still being used right at this moment. Each one of those two wires is either the hot or the neutral, and they just make their way through the framing, through those knobs and tubes, until they make it to the final destination. In this case, it's this fixture here. The way that this is all terminated is just really neat. Let me see if I can get a better shot for it. You can see right there, it comes out of the joist, and then it goes into these, I'm guessing those are the knobs. The tubes go through the joist, and the knobs look like they're used to just mount the wire or clamp the wire. And I could be wrong with my terminology, but that's my guess. And then those wires go up and then down through those insulators, and that ultimately leads us to the final fixture. Now, the clever individual who did all this uh, wiring uh, obviously wanted to be able to control all of this with the light switch and that's why he tapped off of it, went into that junction box, ran it over to there for the switch leg and then back up here to the light fixture and then down to the light fixture and then obviously there was something else going on with an additional light at one point in time that was eventually abandoned. But yeah, what an interesting and unique lighting situation. Uh, I, it's actually kind of impressive how uh, they were able to make it work with what they had. Obviously, not really safe, not really to code, not really good in any of those ways, but <laughs> they did make it work. So I'd be curious to know, uh, have you guys ran into crazy situations like this before? Uh, what was the weirdest wiring situation you've ever encountered? I'd be really interested to hear all about it. I'm sure there's much worse situations than this, but just standing here and looking at that, man, that is a rough, rough deal. <laughs> so we're going to be updating all of this. If you guys want to see that video, uh, it should be coming out here in the next couple weeks if I can get everything done. All right, I'm going to get back to work here. Hope you guys are having a great week, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya. Well, that should be easy enough.